Hey guys, um, I'm Andy Thorai, I'm with Intel, the software company, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, there's uh, my uh, Ian, you, you should consider changing your name, we have a joke going on, he calls me Enterprise Yang, so I call him Yin, so you should consider changing your name to Yin Lane. Um, so, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to build intelligent APIs. If the slide cooperates with me. Guess not. Um, oops. All right. No wise comments when you read through that, right? <laughs> and there'll be a quiz at the end of it. So, the first question everybody asks, including some of our customers, is Intel does software? Of course we do, right? Uh, according to Forbes, uh, I'm being too modest there, we are actually the top seven largest software companies in the world, right? And uh, yeah, we do IoT API, big data analytics. Of course, we do chips as well. So what I'm seeing in the, in the enterprise space is that uh, a lot of people are trying to embark on this API um, wagon, as you can see in the king. Uh, but in my mind, they are using wrong set of tools. And um, if the king took a minute to look around and figure out the right tools, the, the battle would have been over, and, uh, which he didn't. And uh, the rumor has it the king is dead. So you don't want to be dead in the API battle. So <clears throat> when you're building your APIs, which one should it follow? follow? And these are, there's an American joke, I don't know if you get that. Uh, that's the, the scene from movie Dumb and Dumber. Do you want your APIs to be somewhat dumb or you want that to be intelligent is what I'm trying to say there. So how do you build intelligent APIs? Over the course of the years, the compute power has evolved, right? So we, we used to have, I used to work in one of those terminals way back when, right? Uh, from those days, it has come a full circle of intelligent devices, right? The compute power has evolved, the medium has evolved, and, <clears throat> and uh, in addition to those forces, there's also forces that are happening within the data center. The data center is being re-architected, that uh, what used to take a matter of days or months or years, it takes only about a matter of minutes now, right? And that's all because there's uh, change that happens within the data center as well as in the cloud as well. So the, um, the enterprise and the partners, they demand uh, a flexible platform. Over the years, they came to use um, the flexibility and use of the, the SOA. And when we provided them a flexible services that you, know, you could use some of these components, individual components, they started demanding, well, if I can use these components, if you say that's flexible and easy, why can't you just provide me APIs? You said it's easy, so make it even easier for me. So there's a demand coming in from your partners, from the users, to provide API, right? I'm seeing with all of my enterprises that I, I uh, work with. Oops. That's not good. Okay, bear with me, <laughs> sorry. Still, it's not moving though. The slide. Your Wi Fi is too soft. Yeah, I, I didn't use my Wi Fi. It's, uh, it's a local. Okay, there it is. So, um, what I was trying to say is that the next concept is that uh, the sensors are everywhere, right? 
um, your cars have gadgets. In the old days, when, when the cars, when you claim that they are gadgets, they are just local gadgets. But all your car's gadgets are connected to the internet now. And uh, every single person, on an average, has, according to an estimate, that about seven to 10 devices. And you, you rely on that more to communicate than interpersonal communication. The industrial uh, segment, um, the medical segment, especially that's, that's a scary part, that uh, all of those devices are exposed with the sensitive data. And the retail sector. So they all are coming to a full force. So how do you put them all together? You know, all these sensors that's coming big time, and then you put them in, in, in uh, big data storage or structure or unstructured storage, and use analytics and you expose them using APIs. So that's the third force that's working on um, across the forces that users are demanding API access. So having said that, um, enterprise apps obviously come from APIs. I used to think it uh, used to be delivered by storks. Um, it's, it's a joke, by the way, you can laugh anytime. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I found out that APIs, um, APIs are basically used to uh, stork I killed the joke, but Stork delivers developers, but developers build beautiful APIs and you create stories out of that, was what I was trying to say. So APIs are everywhere. Uh, and what makes APIs more compelling and powerful is the additional revenue opportunity that it provides, right? So remember the, the yesterdays that uh, um, the worlds were in transition. We used to take the rigid backends and we used to create what's called a flexible SOA a few years ago. Now we are taking the so-called rigid SOA and trying to build agile API economy. So, but the problem is that you know customers have spent, enterprises have spent millions, gazillions, gazillions of dollars in building that. So you can't just drop everything and go building the newer millennium, and and then later on you find out that something else is coming in with all these new changes coming in, and then start building it again. So as an advisor, when I go to these customers who's trying to turn their enterprise into a platform using API and trying to create additional ideas and revenue out of that, um, I, I advise them. Recently, I wrote a blog on uh, Programmable Web um, about this very same topic. Um, enterprises use APIs as a way to fuel innovation. So what do I mean by that? Essentially, um, all your, your network infrastructure from the, the network, um, the SDN, software-defined uh, networks, the infrastructure, software-defined infrastructure, all of them are exposed as APIs now, if not now, in the near future. Your data platform, which is the most common one, which allows you to expose APIs. Your analytics process and workflows, they're exposed as APIs. The middleware solutions, what you have, are or will be, can be exposed as APIs. Your app and business tier can be exposed as APIs. Not only that, but also all of your operations, security, all of them can be exposed as APIs because everybody, as I said, demands API. If you can provide me an API to access your data, why not your process flows? Why not your workflows? Why not your ESBs? And that's where the market is going. So having said that, multiple um, the infrastructure components, not just the data, multiple infrastructure components are being exposed as APIs. Plus on top of it, you have multiple touch points, right? Uh, mobile, just one piece of it. You have cars, you have sensors, and sensors are growing like unbelievable and producing enough number of data. So having said that, all these things working together when you're building it, how do you build an intelligent API that can cater for all of this, expose all of this, uh, and keep in mind to use all of these things? How do you do that? Well, the first one I see is with most of my customers, that they have an improper security, as I call it. That, so it's kind of a quiz. Which do you think is more better, lowered security or layered security? I know I'm the last guy standing between you on lunch. It's kind of tough, but, <laughs> but you can answer. Feel free to answer any time. It's a trick question. Neither one, because just because you have a layered security doesn't mean that it's going to secure your API or your data properly, right? You need to have a context-based, fine-tuned, purpose-built security. Because when you have especially a layered security, uh, in my mind, it lowers the security. Because you kind of think that you know, someone else is going to do the protection for you, but it's not going to do its job. 
So, uh, as I call it in the Swiss cheese model, that you know you have multiple layers of it. You think somebody is going to help you out, but then you know, it it just builds through it. So, uh, most of customers are building APIs. Uh, they are doing a, what I call it as an indecent exposure, right? So, how do you properly expose your APIs? Your customers are waiting, right? Licking their chops and waiting for you to expose the APIs. As I said, every one of the components that we talked about in the data center or in the cloud. Not at the application level, not at the data level. We are talking about multiple other layers, other layers. So your partners, your customers, consumers, everyone is waiting for you to expose the APIs. So when you do that, you got to, to build intelligent APIs by the first thing I advise my customers is, you know what, take what you got. Don't throw every one of them away. A lot of them can be reusable. So take the existing systems, whether it's a rigid backend systems, or, or SOA systems, or, or legacy systems, it doesn't matter. Let's do an inventory of what you got. Let's do an analysis of what you got. Maybe we'll be able, able to reuse a lot of it, right? So let's take a look at it and figure out what you got. And w if what you have is good, we'll figure out a way to reuse it. What we call it as a API surfacing. Use the backend services and build the APIs on top of it, right? So that's one recommendation I do to my customers. The second one, obviously, you need to secure. We call it as an enterprise secure. Um, just because you're building APIs and using OpenStack and whatnot that you're exposing to the public, it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be secure, right? So you need to have proper security in place. And when I say proper security, it, it needs to be context-based security. You need to understand who's using it, who's accessing it, from where, for what purpose, what time, and what are they trying to do with that. You, you need to be able to understand that. So once you understand that, you can either that build that security component separate, or you could use some of the existing components already in your enterprise, such as identity management systems and policy and so on and so forth. You also have to have a flexible governance. You need to build a platform. It's not just about building APIs, individual APIs anymore. You're building API platform, which consists of multiple APIs, right, or, or a complete platform. And we are building one, you need to keep in mind, you need to build a platform that will give you the flexibility you want. Again, we talked through all those things about, you know, you're building APIs for sensors, you're building APIs for, for mobile devices, you're building APIs for your partner B2B integration. So the need for APIs keep coming. So you're building different kinds of APIs and for different kinds of devices. So when you're building all those things, you need to have flexibility, yet you need to have a complete control over the situation. You don't, you don't want, want to be in a situation you're waiting for disaster to happen. And, and finally, as I talked about, you need to build APIs that are optimized for devices, right? Uh, you can't just optimize for mobility, or you can't just op optimize for business parts and partners usage, so on and so forth, because tomorrow something else is going to come. So you need to build intelligence into your APIs in such a way that that if somebody else want to have a different kind of device tomorrow, who knows what that kind of device is going to be or what sensor is going to be, you should be able to, to adapt to that, right? So a little bit in detail <clears throat> on what we advise to the customers. First, about integrate. Uh, it's about transferring your backends, pulling APIs out of that, or what we call it as API surfacing, to help your customers to participate in the API economy. That's a goal for this, right? <clears throat> and the second one we recommend is about securing your enterprise. Now, um, Ken and I, we used to have this conversation all the time. Why is security always the last afterthought, right? Why, when you're building APIs, that you think about security first, right? How many of you, when designing APIs, you think about a, uh, security first? that I'm going to have my API, okay, there's one, two maybe. <laughs> uh, but you know, so you think about building the security in the right way, context-based security, identity-based security. It's not just about security, when I, when I talk about security, it's not just about authentication, authorization, right? It's a lot more than that. It's about threat protection. It's about doing compliance. Uh, a lot of my customers build APIs, especially in finance sectors and healthcare sectors. And they don't necessarily worry about this compliance factor first. They just go ahead and build it. And later on, they find out, oh, crap, I didn't care for this particular compliance or 
or even when it comes to to um, to finance and healthcare sectors, I didn't um, I didn't take into provision that I have a lot of sensitive data that I'm exposing to my partners, and and that sensitive data is going back and forth out of my enterprise, and I didn't account for that, right? So what I advise with them is to begin with, when you're building it, you gotta have a proper strategy in place. First, figure out who and who's gonna be using it, like I said earlier about context-based security. Who's gonna be using it? What are they gonna be doing with that? And what is your liability for that? So once you are able to figure that out, then you can figure out what you want to do with that data, whether you can tokenize the data, send the tokens out through the API, and, and keep the sensitive data with you. Or, or you could do things such as redact, mask, or, or encrypt the data or the combination thereof. Um, and, and there's a notion out there that when I'm building my security that I, that I build it entirely from, from scratch. You don't have to. There's existing components in your existing enterprise or in your existing systems that can be reused. Uh, it doesn't, again, when I say enterprise, it doesn't mean that it has to be in your data center. It could be on the cloud, right? So you already have some of those security principles, security models, security architecture, reference architecture in place. All you gotta do is that when, when you're using API, you gotta ex extend it a little bit more to add additional security on top of it. So like I said, it's not just about content-based security. It's also about context-based security, who's using it, when they are using it, what they're gonna do with that. So your intelligence should be knowledgeable enough, um, intelligent enough to understand the usage model of what they're gonna do with that, and then you have to build a security based on that. So when you're exposing your sensitive data and APIs, you have to prevent threats, protect your brand, and also, you got to follow the standards. That's one of the one of my pet peeves when I talk to the customers. Most times, they um, they don't worry about the compliance standards. They just build an API. They want to use it, so I'm just giving it to them. And then later on, they figure out um, in credit card processing and other places, oh my API is not up to standards and certain standards, whether it's PCI or something related. Now I got to go back and rebuild the whole thing. So you need to start from the beginning doing that. So we also talked about having a flexible governance. Um, connect, revitalize, exist, extend your existing so and legacy assets. It's about having a maximum control of your APIs. It's about, um, as uh, he talked about, uh, focusing on external packaging for the public, public APIs. And also it's about creating a different policy sets for, for a user, right? So that's another piece that I see a lot of times missing. So once you identify the user group, uh, you got to create a separate policy and you got to figure out a way to enforce them globally, right? Because your APIs are not necessarily going to be exposed through your DMZ all the time. You could have a cloud-based location. So if you have multiple locations, you need to figure out a way to govern them and enforce them uh, across the globe consistently all the time. And more importantly, one of the things I advise my customers is not about just having scalable thousands of APIs, but also a lot of the customers I'm seeing are pulling out multiple APIs, uh, surfacing multiple APIs per application, per data in different formats. So if that's what you're going to be doing, you need to figure out a way to create this cookie cutter APIs again and again for different usages. You don't have to just create one API, you can create multiple flavors of APIs. And you gotta have a way to build it fast enough for the market. And the last point I, I was talking about was about optimizing your APIs. So it's about when you're building the APIs, it's not just about building the APIs to expose certain things. You also can build some intelligence to it so in, in such a way that it will become optimized, meaning suppose if you're building that for, let's say, for mobile devices, you can have the mobile API have some of those things built in. You can optimize it. You can have a security built in. You can build a conversion built in. You know, a lot of things you can build almost like um, um, the equivalent of uh, MBAS, um, you know, mobile as a backend service, can be built in as part of your API. So if you, if you do take care of the actual devices that are going to be using it, and if you're building these things in there, if the device changes, you don't have to worry about, you know, okay, how am I going to care for the new device, uh, uh, group of devices that are going to coming in, right? 
because there's some of the intelligence already built in your, in your API itself, so you can cater for those set of devices. And also it's about um, how, oops, it's about how, um, how you can connect your existing application, as I talked about the, uh, the legacy services. How do, you, how do you pull mobile ready APIs out of that, right? So you have backend services that's been working for you for a while, so keep them as is, and then you build some intelligence at the API level. So in the past, what we used to do is that when we had the, the, the services model or, or the ESB model, uh, which still exists, um, so you used to build that intelligence in the middleware layer somewhere, and that will do all that work for you, the routing, the conversion, security, all those things. But now what I'm seeing, the trend is that the customers are moving that to build those intelligent things into the API, right? do some of those routing things, the transformation things, the security things, the device enablement, the optimization, all of the things are moving towards API instead of from, from back end or in the middleware. So when it comes to building APIs, you can either just do it because you have to and get to the market soon enough, or you could do it right. And in order to do it right, you have to get a right set of tools. Again, going back to the, the first picture, if the king only you know, turned around to evaluate the actual tools that are available to him, you would have survived that battle. So when you're going into the APA battle, don't do it alone and don't do with the wrong set of tools. So as I always close with my, my presentation with the code, um, you need to, as, as a great leader Gandhi once said, you need to protect your valuables and you need to promote your values. In order to do that, you need to, to figure out what your values are, and you need to figure out how to protect them properly. It's not always about the technology. You need to have the right strategy along with the right tool set. So don't wait until the API dude come and ask you, dude, where's my API? Build intelligent APIs before he comes knocking for it. And if you want to check out our resource page, cloudsecurity.intel.com, and that's my contact information out there. And that's it. I'll open for some questions. I think we have some time for questions. Any questions? There's one up there. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the Um identification about Twitter um, doing OAuth, OAuth API? Okay, well, again, like I said, um, so OAuth is just a method of uh, doing the tokens, right? Um, a method of handshake, rather, if you will. But the actual identity system is built somewhere else, right? So you have, I don't know, Active Directory or other directories or other systems, even things like SiteManner or whatnot. So most of the customers who are trying to build APIs, when they come to me, they're like, Andy, I already have this, can I use it? Yeah, absolutely. So all you need is you use that existing system to set the policies for the usage, security, uh, access control, all of that, right? Or, or even rate limiting, all of the policies. All of the policies. So you use some existing identity system, whether it's a cloud-based system or a local system, doesn't matter. And then you figure out what works for you. For if it's a mobile thing, then OAuth works really well. So you can go with OAuth. So there is no, there is no one straight answer to the question saying that you must be using that or you must be using that. Because when the newer set of sensors come in, that may not be able to use OAuth. So if you build your API to support just OAuth, and later on if you have to add a new set of devices to support that OAuth, it may not work. So you need to think forward that what is it you're trying to accomplish and, and implement that in there. Could be one of the options, but that shouldn't be the only option. All right, if no questions, I don't want to keep you guys from lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, wow.